Hello everyone, uh, I hope you're well. Um, I'm recording this in the evening, so I figured I'd do it in my living room. There's uh, Rex the cat. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this. This is, this is a segment from uh, this week's On The Ball podcast, as you're now um, probably getting used to. Um, I've got to decide which bit. I think this will be the bit where we talk about Max Aaron's, because although some people maybe feel like it's moved on a little bit, I'm not entirely sure it has, or certainly not maybe in the more important areas. Um, you can listen to the full podcast on all of your usual podcast players. Uh, you can just search on the ball and you should be able to find it. It's a Norwich City podcast from The Athletic. Uh, this week we had uh, myself, Ben Mounser, former Norwich City press officer, although he's I think he actually worked in content at the club, but it's kind of like becoming a running joke that I say he uh, <laughs> that I say he was a press officer. I don't know why that would be funny. Maybe you have to be a press officer to find it funny. I don't know. Um, also, uh, we had a Norwich City women's captain, Millie Davis, with us, which was brilliant because uh, it was great to have Millie's insight and um, uh, great to have her on the podcast, uh, given that she's just starting off um, on, a, on a big season for Norwich City women, given they have been waiting a long time before they could get back playing. So it's great to have Millie on. I'm sure we'll have her on again in future. Great to be joined by Ben, as always. Uh, I will be doing a live on Facebook on Wednesday afternoon, around four or five o'clock. So keep an eye out for that on my Facebook page, if you're watching this there. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll be doing a live there on Friday afternoon at probably the same time so again keep an eye on my youtube page on both pages subscribe follow do all you need and then uh, you'll get updates of course on when i'm actually doing stuff um, in the meantime i hope you enjoy this and i hope you go and listen to the uh, full podcast you'll be able to find a link in the notes i think i'll put one in uh, in the meantime i hope you're very safe very well <laughs> um, and uh, riding out all that's going on at the moment and uh, see you very soon take care Let's crack on, shall we, with our, love this sting, by the way, headline act. I don't have the sting they put that in, don't worry. It's um, better in, in real time. Um, only one place to start this week. Uh, apparently Barcelona do actually want Max Ahrens. Um, now, I feel like I might have underplayed this possibly in past weeks. Um, next, you'll be telling me that Bayern Munich really want him as well. But um, at this point, I should probably flag up my piece from the weekend, which was a letter I penned to Barcelona on The Athletic. Um, it comes with satire, which I'm not convinced was entirely absorbed by everyone, but that's okay and that happens. Um, to read that and much more, including the comments, I think you should, um, uh, you can um, uh, start with a subscription to The Athletic right now with one of our best ever deals, which is £1 per month for a limited time. Just have it, head over to theathletic.com forward slash UK subscribe. Um, Ben, what were your thoughts when you first, I, I guess, um, heard that um, Barcelona were actually in trying to get Max Ahrens, um, but being, thought, kind of realised it was true? I thought you were asking me what my thoughts when I first read your um, satirical masterpiece, Michael. My last coming um, later, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it was, obviously, we, we know this kind of story, and well, it, it became apparent this story, this Barcelona's interest in Max Ahrens has been there for actually quite a while, but it was the timing of it on the morning of our first home match of the season <laughs> certainly wasn't ideal. Um, but yeah, it, it's uh, we were talking just before we started recording. It's it's really an incredible kind of thing that a Norwich City player, a Norwich City Academy graduate, is wanted by not just Barcelona, but obviously some serious links, as you said, Michael, with Bayern Munich and Paris Saint Germain as well. Um, oh, I forgot about PSG. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So yeah, it's just um, amazing, really. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> don't really know what to say. <laughs> I mean, um, to, 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 uh, although of... fully, fully deserved as well for Max, because as Daniel Farker said after the game on Saturday, he's good enough, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's not surprised, says Daniel. No. Um, I mean, so to be clear, Barcelona have come in. They've they basically tried to take Max Aaron's on loan without an obligation to buy, but maybe an option. You know, if you, you know, if I go and buy a Ferrari, I can see if I like it for a year, and then I might buy it, or I might hand it back and go, "Well, I've had my fun." <laughs> um, a bit like that, really, which is just not how football works, to be honest. And um, I thought Millie Dan, Daniel Farker made a great point in terms of because Max did really well on Saturday. I thought he played well. He handled himself well, and actually, you know, it came as close to scoring as he has done in quite a while too. And um, I can only imagine what it must have been like for him because I think the thing that annoyed Norwich was that this came out on the morning. So regardless of whether Max knew about it, which I would guess he probably did, 
everyone else now knows about it. So what's everyone going to do? They're going to contact Max Aaron, send him messages, whatever. It must have been absolutely nuts for him in the build up to that game. I can only imagine. I think he, um, I think he done well considering like it was on the morning of the first like home game of the season. So I think he done well for it not to distract him. Um, I think maybe another player might have distracted them, but I think he kept he kept it quite. Yeah, he didn't. I don't know. I think as a player, that probably would have impacted you quite a lot to have that in the back of your mind. Um, because that is like a dream <laughs> come true, really, isn't it? Um, massive clubs asking for you. So, yeah, I think, like you say, he done he done really well in not letting it distract him. Um, and, yeah, I thought he played really well. Um, he was quite um, a pivotal player in the attacking um, movements, I think, on Saturday. And he had a few chances as well. So, yeah. I'm uh, sort of noticing how important Max Aaron's is because he is kind of the defensive cover whilst also providing so much width in, in that side and sort of forward m- momentum as well, which kind of allows everyone ahead of him to to, to drift inside. And um, I suppose those sort of situations, really are the sort of, sort of occasions where if, if if he was suddenly looking across, going, "Oh God, I'm playing Preston," and um, but, um you know, Barcelona being on this, year, that's normally the sort of time when someone puts in a silly tackle or just sort of loses their discipline and ends up getting sent off. Which you know, you could probably see some players doing it, but again, he sort of kept it together, didn't he? It wasn't any anything like that that came up. And as I said, he almost looked like this sort of this leader on the pitch, almost. Yeah, I agree. I think he's just he's still so young, and I think. He's developed through Norwich and I think personally he might continue to do that for some time. So I don't know, I think that is just such a dream move, but what they're offering, it might not be what the club wants. So, yeah. I think the point you make, Michael, as well, you you made a good point. I think the first two games of this season have, have really certainly brought it home to me how good a player Max Ahrens is and how important he is to us, especially at this level. I think last season, when obviously when we were on the back foot for in many games for a long long periods in games you probably didn't see that side of um things as much but now we're back in the championship is straight away you can see um the effect that max Aaron's is going to have on matches just on the obviously there's been a lot of discussion around barcelona's kind of approach to this i would say that um it was reported earlier in the summer that norwich were open to potential kind of loan to transfer agreements but as you highlighted, um, Michael, that would be with, with an obligation to buy. I think this says a lot as well about Barcelona's current situation, that they're trying to um, manufacture a deal like this. Um, there's been a lot of reports about their financial situation not being great. I think Ronald Koeman has already been described as being, quote, absolutely furious about his transfer policy. And, you know, Koeman kind of looks furious all the time anyway. He's that kind of manager. <laughs> but... Um, what what's interesting though is they appear to be selling um, Nelson Semedo to Wolves, who is a right back, um, for a quite a chunky fee. I'm led to believe. So whether that will um, make them push through a deal for either Max or you know pursue Max um, more quickly, or go, or go for the other option, which looks like it might be Serginio Dest from Ajax. Yes, I was going to exactly say that. I think that that Dest has been linked with, with Bayern Munich as well. So I, I, I think that's possibly where the, um, the conversations are, are happening, but I, I would be surprised if, if Barcelona weren't signing Dest as soon as they've sold tomato and, and there you go, basically. Um, but mm. even the, the link itself is, is something um, I think, yeah, I mean, Norwich probably would consider loan situations with an obligation as a means of making something happen and that being the only way you could make it happen. I don't think they're going to start, you know, touting for just loaning out their players, you know, in, yeah. if, if they don't have to, but um, so it's all part of the fun and, and Norwich have got an academy player or academy product of sorts, obviously coming through Luton as well until he was 16, who, you know, could end up at Barcelona, could have ended up at Barcelona just as a whole conversation. And I heard them talking about it on Sky Sky News, uh, Sky Sports, not on Sky News, didn't get to that point, but Sky Sports. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is, this is, you know, this is nuts really. But, um, but there we go. Um, I mean, it's, I've got written here what happens now, which is obviously no idea because it's a transfer window and things can change so quickly. I don't think there's much else to report elsewhere, to be honest. Um, probably the good news, Millie, is that, 
I think Norwich have got the game at Bournemouth on Sunday and then uh, Derby the following weekend and then it's the international break. So there's actually only two games now where the transfer window is going to affect it because then the window closes and, and Norwich are at <laughs> Rotherham, which will be a great, <laughs> that'll be a great place to go if you've been hoping for a move for five months and all of a sudden you're playing at the New York stadium. What a place by the way. So, I mean, that, that's beneficial for Norwich, isn't it? There are only two games really where this situation um, is sort of yeah. bubbling away. Yeah. I think it's the, is it the 5th of October it closes? Yeah. So yeah, just two games. So yeah, it's beneficial, I suppose. <laughs> I think um, keep the squad together. <laughs> yeah, the international window doesn't it? Close, it closes on October the fifth, which is two weeks tonight. Slams shut. Oh, um, is it on a Monday? Yeah, it's Monday, October oh. the fifth, and then whose idea was two, that? And then obviously we've got that really awkward kind of domestic window which runs until Friday the sixteenth, and that's the, that's the kind of that's the period I'm more worried about really. Um, maybe not with Max Aaron's, but given the amount of goals that are being scored in the Premier League, I can imagine a few Premier League teams are, are looking to shore up some defences <laughs> and maybe um, Ben Godfrey might be on the wish lists of some um, Premier League clubs. Yeah. In that, in, you know, in that, in that window, once the international window is closed and the domestic window remains open and Premier League clubs are maybe panicking that they haven't um, fulfilled their recruitment quite as, damn, I said, um, they haven't fulfilled their recruitment quite as well as uh, they, they maybe had wished. I mean, go looking into the championship for some players. It's a, it's an interesting logic to suggest that secure, shoring up yourself as a Premier League team should involve a Norwich defence. Um, that I'm just, I'm just playing devil's ho, advocate. Ho, ho. Just playing devil's <laughs> advocate. Um, Are you saying, Michael, that Ben Godfrey is not at all on the radar of any Premier League teams? I'm absolutely not saying that. Absolutely <laughs> not. And I, in in truth, completely agree with you. <laughs> but that's part of the fun, isn't it? Um, I don't know what we're going to do on the 5th of October then. Sounds a bit dangerous recording a podcast in the evening when the window's still got a few hours before it closes. Yeah. But no one else needs to worry about that, don't worry. Maybe maybe we can do a live pod. Oh, that sounds sounds very 2018. I don't know if I'm having it. (laughs) 